On this edition of Read with Ronald, I read Falcon 7. First published in 2010, James W. Houston's Falcon 7 follows criminal defense attorney and former Navy SEAL John Jack Caskey as he works to exonerate two Navy pilots who he suspects are being framed for international war crimes after completing a bombing mission gone wrong. Falcon 7 was Houston's eighth book and he chose to focus the storyline on international law and the war on terrorism and the possibilities that could come from that my sister she bought this book for me as a teenager you know what i can tell we was teenagers because look at that price right there three dollars she bought it as a gift for me and um so i think i've tried like two three times to read this book and each time i try to read this book i cannot get to the prologue i would get to the prologue and then i get to like chapter one and just stop and so this time i was determined to read all the way through this and honestly I think younger me was on to something. Today is January 5th. I've been reading this book called Falcon 7. Uh, I'm on chapter 3. And uh, this book is uh, a book. I don't know what to say about it other than the fact that the writing is just very... And this happened, and this happened, and this happened, and this happened. And then it's a lot of telling and not showing. Like, the main character is telling us everything that's happening from his perspective. And then the author is telling us the story, but he's not showing us the story. And then the protagonist. This is one of those books that heavily relies on patriotism to tell its story. And so the protagonist, of course, is politically conservative. And I feel like... Like I said, I'm only on chapter three, so I don't know what's gonna happen. I kinda know what's gonna happen in the story, but I don't. I was able to pick up on some plot points, but I can tell you right now, I've already guessed the main plot, and I already know there's gonna be some type of romance shoved into this between him and the politically liberal colleague of his. But just know that so far, this book is um, very much a book. It's very much a book. It's January 7th, it's about 2 in the morning, and I need to talk about this right here. I'm on chapter 8 of 28, and I saw a tweet earlier today asking if hate reading was a thing. I can confirm that hate reading is a thing. I'm only still reading this book because I just want to know how it's going to end. I want answers to the question that's been posed in this book of who ordered what took place in this book that set the plot off. I hate the main character. I don't know what his name is because they keep switching between Jack and John. So Jack John Caskey, I hate him. He's arrogant. He's condescending. He's very pushy. He's annoying. He's always threatening to run to the press. And he's always blackmailing folks. This book is just, um, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I want to be fair to it. I want to be fair to it. And I want to be fair to the story. And to the characters. I hate the main character. Because he is, he's like, he's so arrogant and condescending. And he just looks down on everybody else. He thinks he's better than everybody because he's an ex-Navy SEAL turned criminal defense lawyer. And he thinks he knows every freaking thing. I'm on chapter 8. I'm only still reading this book because I want to know who, who did it. It's like this book wants to be a mystery, a thriller, and a romance, and a political commentary all at once. And it's not doing a good job at any of them. Like, for example, um, in chapter two, I predicted that Jack John Caskey was going to be the one that was going to go to um, to Holland to represent the big case in this book. And I was right. And then I predicted in chapter six that it was going that they was going to sit up here and try to um, do a jailbreak to get the two pilots out of jail that have been captured from the big thing that happened in this book once again i was right because that's what they're gonna that's what they planned in chapter seven and i predict now it's gonna fail 
And another thing, this book was written in 2010, so you already know, you already know who they are talking about heavily in this book. Because like I said, it's trying to be political commentary, but it's not doing a good job. Just know I hate reading this book. Right now it's at a three, because I'm trying to be fair to it. It's terribly written, and the story is not compelling. You have to have a certain mindset to engage with this story the way it wants to be engaged with. And unfortunately, I don't have that mindset. That's why I'm so annoyed with it. I just want to add, and you know what, Jack John is condescending, but you know what? It's not necessarily that he's condescending, it's just that he's so badly written. Like, first of all, if he mentioned Guantanamo Bay one more time, and what Kristen and her lawyers did in Guantanamo Bay one more time for people who were not U.S. citizens, and why, if they could do that for free for U.S. citizens, why can't they do it for U.S. citizens? If you mention that mess one more time, it's not the fact that he is condescending and arrogant and pushy and does blackmailing and like it's it's not even that that's the problem because there can be characters like that that are well written jack john is not well written he's not but he's written as if he's like the most knowledgeable character in this book and the problem is in order for him to be the smartest in this book everyone else has to be extremely dumb Like, extremely dumb. You're telling me Kristen, who went to law school with him, who did better than him in law school, and works at a well, and is, works at one of the top law firms in the country, you're telling me she doesn't know a law, but Jack John does? Seriously? Seriously? This is, that's what I mean. In order for Jack John to be the smartest character in the book, everybody else got to be dumb. Dumber than a pile of bricks. And then the arguments. The argument. The arguments are a... The arguments that he be using. It's... It, it's not even the fact that the arguments are in the book. Because... You know what? There are political statements and views and positions in books all the time. It's how they're used in this book. It's like they're shoehorned in. They're not added in in a way that's like serviceable to the story. I'm trying to have this done by Sunday because I got other books to read. I got other things to do with my life. So I'm really finna soldier through this. But this book is terrible. And I hate reading it. I am hate reading it. So far it's a three because I'm trying to be fair. But it could it's, it potentially stands a chance to get a zero. Okay, new location, but I also had to just one more thing. Today is January 8th. I'm going to make this real quick. Um, this book. Um, I don't know. I have a like dislike relationship with it. I don't like it, but like the mystery is interesting. Jack John is extremely stupid in my opinion. He thinks he's so smart, but then there have been several instances in this book where he's been proven to not be that smart. And he doesn't consider all the possibilities. He's just arrogant and condescending, like I said before. Um... As far as like the actual writing goes, 
not that great. Um, the mystery is interesting, I think, only because I really want to know who did it. The plot is very much, I don't know, it seems very much conspiracy theory, but we'll see. Like, everybody is against America and trying to trap them. It's like, it's like all the countries against America. That's what it's seeming like. And I'm like, if that's really where this story goes, I'm going to be done. It's going to be a zero. Because <laughs> that's so stupid, but we'll see. I also want to say that uh, I'm on chapter 20, so I got about eight chapters left. This man is trying to shoehorn a romance into this story, and it's just, it's kind of like half-baked. Like, there's not really any attraction, like, between the characters other than, oh, we were attracted to each other in college, but it's like, but y'all not doing anything to develop attraction now. And then another issue I have with this book is the way the women characters are written. They're all either written as women who need to learn their lesson and learn their place or they've got horrible attitudes or like they're extremely angry like I don't think it's one good written character in this book that is a woman like a good woman character that's written well and then Jack John is a hypocrite because he gets mad about people who challenge his point of view on this case and yet earlier in the book he'd be having that same point of view on different things to prove his point about why it's not these pilots fault about what happened and I'm like Jack John you're a, you're a hypocrite oh and I also learned that uh, Jack is a nickname for John but because they keep switching back and forth between his name and we first learned his name was Jack and we didn't find out his name was John about until like way later in the book I'm calling him Jack John that's his name to me Jack John Caskey Jack John Caskey the dummy I don't know what I'm gonna give this book it's it's if it turns out to be a satire it's gonna get a four. It might even get a five. But if it goes how I'm expecting it to go, it's looking very two, two point five, maybe even a one, possibly even a zero. I'm just saying. Today is January 9th. I finished Fuckum Seven this morning. Um I don't know, it was okay. The ending was it seemed very fan fiction like, but it was okay. Um that beginning half was not good. It made me want to put down the book several times. But the second half, the ending half, it was... I'm still stuck on whether it was actually okay or if I just got so used to reading through the book that I just read through and was like, okay, whatever, because I was just trying to be done with it. But I finished it and I gave it a three. Because um, it, was, it was not good. It was not bad, but it wasn't really all that good either. But it was it was okay. It was okay. Uh, so we start off in the prologue with these two Navy pilots, uh, Duncan and Rawlings. They're doing their missions. They're getting ready to return to base, and they get this final mission that's like, oh, we need you to go over the border of where you're at and go uh, drop a bomb on this place. And so they go, they drop the bomb on their target like they're supposed to, and then they get shot down and they're captured and they don't know what's going on. And so that's how the prologue ends. And then we go into chapter one. And that leads me to my first point. The prologue, in my opinion, ruined this book a little bit because the prologue makes it clear that the two Navy pilots are innocent from the beginning. And so that kind of ruins the book because the book is kind of like set up like a mystery and it's like, well, there's not, the mystery is supposed to be who did it, but part of the mystery, I feel like what would have made this book more compelling was not knowing whether the pilots were telling the truth or not about the incident and it would have came out at the trial. The prologue is in third person and then we go into first person point of view. So this is where we meet our actual protagonist, Jack Caskey. John, actually, before the duration of this video, I'm going to be calling him Jack John Caskey. But the the explanation is his name is John Caskey and he goes by Jack. We meet Jack John. He's in a bakery getting him some breakfast. He's a former Navy SEAL turned criminal defense lawyer. He's tried big cases and he's very arrogant and very condescending. He's seeing the news of what happened in the prologue and he's angry about it because he's like, oh, why are the why are these two American pilots being treated like being treated like this? And why are they being dragged through the thing? And why are they being dragged through the streets of 
where they're at and all this other type of stuff and they're being humiliated and they don't it's gonna take some time to find them you know just being him being him being mr i think i know it all he's finding out what took place with the rest of the world which is why i say the prologue ruined this book because it would have been we should have been with jack john the whole time but anyways we find out that he's a criminal defense lawyer and we find out that the pilots have been taken captive by the people of the country that they were shot down in and then they were transported to holland on a falcon 7 plane to be tried at the International Criminal Court, which is often called the ICC in this book. What was bombed was a refugee facility for uh, medical services. That's what was bombed. And a lot of refugees were killed, a lot of women, children, and European medics were killed. And that's why the, um, that's why Duncan and Rawlings are being put on trial for war crimes of killing refugees and European people who had nothing to do with what was going on. The United States is not a part of the ICC. They don't approve it. And the country that this took place in, the country that this took place in, this took this whole bombing, it took place in Pakistan. And Pakistan is not a member of the ICC either. But the they are trying the case on the grounds that the pilots were in on Afghanistan soil because that's where they were. And they're like, because the pilots were on Af and received the orders on Afghanistan soil, it counts as jurisdiction. As soon as I found out they had been transported to the ICC, I was like, Jack John's going to be the lawyer that has to defend them at the trial. And I was right, because he gets contacted by Chris Marshall, who is also an active duty Navy SEAL, but he works in counterterrorism. And so he he contacts Jack John and he's like, OK, uh, hey, Jack, so we need a lawyer who has successfully defended who has successfully defended clients for big cases and you're the perfect man because you drafted the book that we used for understanding ICC law and you have military experience so you can you can do this my second issue with this book was the writing it was very much the writing was very much and this happened, and then this happened, and then this happened, and then this happened. It's like, it's not like good prose. It's not good prose. It's just, this happened, and this, I, I took my suit jacket off. I sat at my desk. I opened my computer. I opened this file. I looked at the file. I closed the computer. I put my suit jacket back on. I walked out the door. I went to this location. I talked to this person. I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't need a play-by-play -play of everything you did. Just tell me the story, man. So he gets, pun intended, he gets drafted into doing this case because he didn't want to do it at first. But he gets drafted into doing it. And so he decides to call this girl that he knows from college, from law school, Kristen Chambers, who is a girl that he had a crush on in law school. But he tried to go on a date with her and she was like, no, I'm focused on law school. And so years later, she works at a nice law firm and he, you know, is a criminal defense lawyer for the government basically. So he contacts Kristen to ask her for help, but the way he does it is so irritating. He's like, Kristen, I need your help on this case. And if you don't help me, I'm going to blackmail your law firm by going to the press because you guys were down in Guantanamo Bay uh, advocating for these detainees down there, but he doesn't call them detainees. He calls them something else, but I'm not saying that because it's derogatory, but advocating for these detainees for free but and now we need y'all to um come defend these americans for free and if you don't do it i'm gonna go to the press and talk about how y'all were defending detainees for free but you wouldn't need to defend people from your own country for free and i'm like oh my gosh so you're gonna blackmail this lady into working on this case and so basically Kristen is like i mean i'm not the person who can get us working on this case for free but i can submit the papers you know doing her job she does her job and it's like, I can get you, I can submit the paperwork, but I can't guarantee anything. He's like, oh, well, you need to guarantee it or I'm going to go to the press. So right off the bat, Jack John was just arrogant, condescending. He got on my nerve and this whole book, I wanted him to be humbled. And so basically, while he is waiting on a response from Kristen, 
<laughs> he decides to go to the hog to talk to the administrator to see his clients because they're being held in prison. So he goes there and he goes inside the court and he walks up to the receptionist. And this is how you can tell he's arrogant and condescending and full of himself because he walks up to the secretary in an international court, meaning people from all over the world come to this court for trials and cases. He walks up to the secretary in an international court that is used by everybody in the world and the communicative languages used are French and English. This man walks up to the secretary and is like, do you speak English? And I'm like, does she speak English in an international court where all the countries are going and English is like the one of two languages used to conduct trials and conduct business? Does she speak English? Do you think they would put a secretary out front as a reception for everybody in the globe if she didn't speak English? <laughs> So anyway, he tells her why he's there, which is to see his clients, and she calls who she needs to call, which is the man who was in charge of getting him to see his clients, and also in charge of approving him to do his job as a lawyer at the court, because because he's not, he's not administered to the court, so he has to submit paperwork to be able to defend a case at the court, so... Basically, Jack John is like, oh, well, you need to make that happen as soon as possible, and I'm not leaving until I get to see my clients, and if you don't let me see my clients, I'm going to go to the press, and I'm going to tell them that you wouldn't let me see my clients. And so Jack John, Jack John is one of those people who, he does not like the press, but he sees them as a tool to achieve his own means, but he's like, and he always threatens, that his number one threat, to go to the press. That is his number one threat. So he's like, I'm going to go to the press. And if you don't, if you don't let me see my clients, and I was hoping this court administrator would stick by his guns and would humble this man, but he didn't. And that's my third issue with this book. This book caters to Jack John. He has no challenges. He has no real challenges in this book, other than the ones that he creates for himself. He has no real challenges because everything in this book shifts around to allow him to do what he needs to do without encountering anything challenging. And anything that he does encounter is either a challenge that he created himself or is a challenge that like basically just solves itself so he can just continue pressing forward so we can tell the story. And that was my issue with this. Like there is no way this man should have been able to walk into this court demand to see his clients and when told no oh i'm gonna go to the press and the court administrator is like oh well okay well i'm gonna let you see him after you just said he... anyways so this is where we get the plot point of jack john starts considering breaking into the prison to get his clients out and he basically brings up this act signed by the government called the Service Members Protection Act, which is basically this act that gives the president the authority to authorize breaking into another country to rescue active duty service members and bring them back to the United States. And it was signed as a response to the United States not agreeing to the treaty that founded the ICC. So basically, he's bringing up the Service Members Protection Act as a way to get his clients out of jail and back to the United States. He meets with Rawlins and Duckin, and they tell him basically their side of what happened after they completed their mission. They tell Jack John that there was a man on the plane, an older man who looked like he was the one who would set everything up. So at first, I thought maybe it was the court administrator. I'm like, because he was kind of being, you know, a little elusive, but no, it wasn't him. After he gets done seeing his clients, he goes outside and, you know, the press, they... They own them. They own them. They want answers. They want he he gives them you know you know the PR answers. After he meets with Duncan and Rollins, he goes back to the United States to meet with Kristen and get her answer on whether she'll be part of the case or not. And so he goes to her law firm in New York, and this man walks in there, and Kristen meets him at the front, and she's like, "Okay, look, I submitted the paperwork, but I can't really guarantee whether we're gonna be able to work on this or not." And this man is like. If you don't help me, I'm going to tell the press about how y'all was down in Guantanamo Bay. Basically what he said earlier, I'm going to tell the press about how y'all was down in Guantanamo Bay defending detainees for free, but y'all won't even defend American pilots for free who did nothing wrong. And he's, and basically, 
at this point, this was like the third or fourth time he had brought this up in the book. And I'm like, it's Shelby in the mattress all over again for Prince and Lover. He keeps bringing it up. And I'm like, I got it the first time. You don't need to bring it up again and again and again. And it's an empty threat. So basically, he goes to Kristen's law firm to meet with the pro bono committee, the uh, committee that can approve them for working with him for on this case for free. So he goes there and he gets in a meeting with the representative that they sent, which is Thomas. So he gets in this meeting with Thomas after he threatens to throw a tantrum in the lobby if she does not, if they do not sit with him and talk about representing these clients for free. He gets in this meeting and you would think that when he gets in this meeting, he would present a case about why they should work for these clients for free, basically convincing the law firm of his client's innocence and why they should hop on defending his clients with them. But no, this man gets in this meeting and basically the first thing he says out of his mouth is, oh, if y'all don't help, he basically says what he says to Kristen, if y'all don't help, I'm gonna go to the press and tell them what y'all did for the detainees in Guantanamo Bay for free. And Thomas is like, so that's, that's, what you, that's your argument? I was happy that Thomas called him on this. He's like, that's your argument? If we don't help you, you gonna go to the press? Really? And so they, instead of him presenting a case as to why they should help and why he's convinced of their innocence, he basically goes into this like this political talk of like their law firm and their priorities and how they would help people who are not Americans for free, but they won't help Americans for free because they feel like, oh, if the ICC says they did it, if they committed a war crime, then they have the right to try them and we haven't even signed the treaty, you know, all type of just political talk. And he, this happens a lot in this book where he'll go to important meetings that are supposed to be about his clients and he'll start spewing political talk, political viewpoints. And I'm like, stick to the plan. Your plan is supposed to, how are you going to get these people to help you if you're challenging their politics? And I'm like, and basically just throwing around your own political views as if they're like word of God. Like you're not going to get anywhere by insulting people, you dummy. So basically Thomas is like, oh, well, We'll see what we can do. Basically, like, we'll get back to you with the answer. And so he leaves. And he gets on the phone with uh, the person who hired him, which is Chris Marshall. He gets on the phone with Chris. And he's like, okay. Uh, Chris tells him, um, we got some new information. So we believe that the intelligence we receive is correct, but that the location might have been wrong. And that we might have been given that location, but the act but the enemy forces that we were supposed to be taking out actually met at a different location. So then later on that night, uh, after he meets with Chris to get new information, he gets a call he gets a visit from Kristen who basically says, Oh, the pro bono committee approved our working with you and you can have all of our resources to work on this case. And basically Jack John's big plan at the moment is to get the president to enforce the Service Members Protection Act to get the pilots out of prison and back to the U.S. But he's like, and, but I don't know if he's going to do it because, you know, he's like basically like, he's like trying to be friends with the ICC and trying to, you know, do international relations, you know, his job. But basically, like, he's like, I don't know if he's going to do it. I don't know if he's going to enforce the Service Members Protection Act. So my plan is to go to the press. I'm going to hold a press conference and I'm going to let the world know about this act that the president has the authority to enact at any time to get our men out of this prison. And so basically, Kristen, Kristen. Kristen is the pretty girl who went to Jack, the law school with Jack John, and she was apparently, she apparently did better than him in law school, and she's got herself a nice law job, but, and she's supposed to be, like, a better lawyer than he is, but she don't even know about this act, and he does, and I'm like, you know what, that, and I'm like, I get it, as a lawyer, you're not gonna know everything, but, like, she didn't even know that this thing had been passed, and I'm like, <laughs> she didn't know this thing had been passed and I knew from the minute that we met her what type how the women in this book were going to be written I'm going to go ahead and say this now all the women in this book were not written well you have Kristen who is only there to be a challenge for Jack John that he has to get along with and correct 
out and basically try to get her to see his point of view. Keep in mind, he's the one who basically forced her to work on this case. He forced her to work on this case. She was not interested in working on this case. She even told him, I don't want to work on this case. But he basically forced her into working on it. And then if they're not like Kristen, who's all subservient, then they're women with attitudes who are not, who are no hell. They're super emotional. They're always going off about stuff. The women in this book are written terribly. And there was only three of them that mattered. Three of them that mattered. And so basically... This is In this part of the book, I predicted that Jack John was going to end up breaking these two out of prison. I'm like, he's going to end up breaking these two out of prison because he's a former Navy SEAL turned criminal defense lawyer. And he's the only one with these qualifications. But he keeps saying, oh, my life as a Navy SEAL is over. It's over. It's over. It's over. I'm not going back to that. And I, and I truly believe they chose me because I'm a criminal defense lawyer and they chose me to try high profile cases. And I'm like, Jack John, if you really believe that, you are the dumbest protagonist I have ever met in my life. Really, all these high level government criminal defense lawyers and you believe they did not choose you because you have a Navy SEAL background? Are you serious? So then they, so then he takes Kristen back to Holland and they go to visit the defendants again. And he gets a video, he gets a video camera and he films like the front of the prison. And so when he goes inside, head of the prison's like, okay, Mr. Jack John, I was told you filmed our prison. You can't do that. So I need your video footage. And Jack John's like, okay, I'll give you my footage. If you have the footage of all the journalists who was out here when I left the prison, filming the prison and all that other type of stuff. So if I can't film, then they couldn't be, because you said there's no negotiations on there's no filming, right? So I'm going to need their footage too. And I'll give you my footage. And so, of course, he can't produce that footage. So Jack John gets to keep his footage. And they go talk to the defendants. And basically, Rollins and Duncan are like, oh, who is this? And he introduces Kristen. And, of course, he tells them, oh, she's working with basically the same thing he was threatening to go to the press about. And Rollins and Duncan are like, oh, my gosh, you brought the enemy in here. You brought somebody who's defending people that are actively trying to kill us. Basically, they don't like Kristen. So... Nobody in this book likes Kristen for that exact reason. They don't trust her for that exact reason. And they're all men who don't trust her. So basically, Jack John holds a press conference for in front of... He holds a press conference and he basically tells the entire country about the Service Members Protection Act. And basically how the president has the authority to enforce it so that the Americans go, can go in there and get the people out. And so basically you know, to put pressure on him to enact it. And so basically, they go back to where they are to work. Basically, Chris sets up a meeting with Jack John and this man named Richard. Richard is a former SEAL as well. And so basically, when they're considering a Service Members Protection Act, they are considering how to break into the prison to get the men out. And Jack John is basically like, oh, and if there's some casualties, then it is what it is because they're gonna probably gonna have to be some casualties to get them out. That's why he did the videoing of the prison. He gave that footage to Richard so they could map out the hog and they were gonna do a prison break. Richard is like, I'm not gonna do this unless we have specific authorization from the president to do this prison break. So basically the people who volunteered from Kristen's firm to be on the case, they show up. And Jack and John did not vet these people. They just showed up and he's like, okay, this is our goal. This is what we're gonna do. And then like when he asks them who they are to introduce themselves and what they do, one of the guys who's there is an international business attorney. So he secures business deals between international companies. And so he's well-versed in international law. And so Jack John is like, so what are you doing here? And I'm like, Jack John, you said you needed help. You act, you forced this firm to give you help. And then when the people that volunteered, voluntarily came to help, you question why they're there. Why are you questioning the help that showed up? Obviously this man is more versed in international law than you are. He's useful. He's useful. That's why he's here. Dummy. They had a pretrial, and that's where they discovered that there was footage of the bombing. Basically, it was around this point that Jack, another one of Jack John's former Navy SEAL buddies, Kevin Crane, shows up. Kevin shows up, and he's like, hey, you know, I saw what you're doing. I want to help. And Kevin is like, he's a, Kevin is a contractor security dude I'm, I'm really not sure what he does he does a lot 
Kevin Kevin does everything in this book. He do everything. He he do everything. And so basically, he, he do everything. He got money. That's what we're supposed to know. So he show up. I want to help. Me and my boys, we want to help. So And Jack and John's like, sure, okay, I trust you. Let's go. So when Kristen asks, okay, who is this? Jack and John's like, oh, don't worry about it. And Kristen's like, well, how... how He's, she's like, you asked me to be your co-counsel, so I need to know who's helping us. And Jack John's like, you don't need to be in my business. I I worry about this. And I'm like, you brought her into this with no context. And now when she asks questions for the context of the case and who is helping on the case, you get an attitude with her. So did you want her... The way Jack John treated Kristen in this book was trash, and it was just terrible. And so basically, we finally get his backstory on why he left the Navy SEALs. He left the SEALs because there was a mission, and basically, they were on a mission, and they got called to go help some Marines who got gotten in a firefight with enemy forces. So they go over there to help, and they're pinned down in an ambush. And so basically, they start, you know, taking out the enemy forces, and the enemy forces have gone into civilian homes and so basically some of the civilians got killed and word got out that some of the civilians got killed in the uh in the firefight and they was they were accidentally killed by american soldiers and so the american soldiers were put on trial by the military for accidentally killing civilians and they were convicted and that's why Jack John left the Navy SEALs because he was like they did what they were supposed to do and they shouldn't have been convicted and it's not fair and I'm leaving so he leaves the Navy SEALs to go be a lawyer and so basically when he, Kevin comes to offer his help and basically he's like Kevin me and you we gonna go to Pakistan we gonna figure out what happened and Kevin's like okay so what you trying to do? so like what you trying to do you trying to be a Navy SEAL again and Jack John is like no I'm not trying to be a Navy SEAL I'm just trying to do my job as a lawyer and and there's no way they didn't pick me to be a Navy SEAL basically Kevin's like oh so you you don't think you being a Navy SEAL factored into you being picked to try this case and Jack John's like no it didn't and I'm like Jack John you are so stupid you are stupid yes it did you are the only former Navy SEAL turned criminal defense lawyer, and you don't think you were purposely chosen for this? Are you serious? Chosen by a man who is an active Navy SEAL over counterterrorism, and you don't think you were chosen for this because you're a former Navy SEAL? You are a dummy. But, <laughs> but anyways, he's like, no, that's not why I was chosen. He and Kevin go to Pakistan to figure out who filmed the who filmed the bombing. Because they're like, how could somebody have been there to film the bombing? They would have had to know that it was going to happen. Basically, they go to Pakistan. They um, they start asking around. They start asking questions. They find out that there were three men who came from Afghanistan. They were supposedly there to film the enemy forces going in and out of the building. They talk to the witnesses. And then they get in a firefight. With, uh, they get ambushed. And so they take out the people that ambushed them because Kevin was super prepared for them. Because he do everything. And then... uh. They go to the Pakistani government to talk to them about what they know about the intelligence. They talk to Kwasi, who was in charge of relaying the intelligence to the American intelligence officer who received it. And so Kwasi is basically like, oh, I told him that there are refugees in the facility. And so basically we find out that it was the Pakistani intelligence who sent the cameramen out there to film because they were supposed to be filming the capture of the enemy forces coming out of the refugee facility. What was supposed to happen was enemy forces were supposed to meet in this facility, in this refugee facility, because they felt like it was safe. Nobody would attack a refugee facility. And so Rollin and Duncan got in order to bomb the facility. But the Pakistani intelligence said they were filming the facility to get the capture because there were supposed to be special operatives from the Americans on the ground to capture them without killing the refugees. And so basically we learned that Kevin was one of the special operative teams and they received no such order. And so that's why he's pissed off and that's why he personally wanted to help because he felt like his men were done wrong and he didn't like that. So basically he and him, they're, they're confronting Quasi, they're asking him what went wrong and Quasi's like, oh, I told the American intelligence that there are people, there are refugees in this facility. 
And Kevin's like, that's not, Kevin goes off, basically like, that's not true, because our intelligence could not be wrong, and we were told, and da 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 and blah, Kevin goes off, basically, and so basically they get nowhere, and they leave. And so then, Jack John meets with Chris, who starts acting elusive. <laughs> Chris is supposed to be, like, the government contact that Jack John has, and he's basically, like, the person in charge of coordinating the government working with Jack John to get Duncan's and Rawlings off and so basically Chris starts acting elusive and so at this point I'm like maybe Chris is in on it Chris is up to something he's up to something so he goes to meet with Jack John and Kristen is in the meeting too and he has info that he does not want to go to the press and so he's like well I'm only going to tell Jack John I don't want to tell Kristen and Kristen's like why can't I know I'm co-counsel and Chris is basically like well, because I don't want you to know, because I don't want you going to the press. So if you're going to sit there and throw a little hissy fit you about it, you can leave. And Kristen, of course, looks at Jack John for, like, help. And Jack John's like, well, I don't know what to tell you. And so Kristen basically leaves. And I was like, so Chris, you don't want this to go to the press, but you're going to tell it to the person who's been threatening to go to the press this entire book? You're going to tell this information you don't want to go to the press to the person that has threatened at least about six times at this point in the book to go to the press. And so basically, the information is that the president is going to station a battle group off the coast of Holland to run exercises, but it's supposed to be basically a battle group to basically, if they decide to enforce the Service Members Protection Act, basically they're there to enforce it, to basically get the ICC sweating into granting bail to Rollins and Duncan. And so... Jack John is like, oh, there's no way he's, there's no way the president's going to do that. It's no way, like, he's not, he's scary. There's no way he's going to do that. And so basically that's what happens. They station a battle group off the coast of Europe. And of course the Europeans go crazy. They're like, oh, they're planning to break the people out. And so in response to them stationing the battle group off the coast, and the ICC indicts the former president and his whole administration for war crimes for previous bombings and basically if they ever leave america can go anywhere in europe they can be or go to any country that is under itc jurisdiction they can be arrested and so basically jack john is trying to figure out who was the owner of this falcon 7 so basically he finds out that the falcon was rented by a company in belgium and he finds that out in pakistan and finds out that it was rented under a false side number and so basically he finds out that it was a Belgian company that rented this Falcon 7 and that it was already in position to get these two to the ICC before the bombing even took place. So that's so it was like a setup to frame the Americans for war crimes and to put pressure on them to sign on to the ICC and be under its jurisdiction. And he also learns that the person who was in charge of receiving the intelligence from Pakistani intelligence was a man named Major Russell Curley. So he learns this and Kristen is like, you know, it's possible that this could have been a plot set up by the Americans. And Jack John never considered that possibility. I'm like, you're a lawyer who is about to go defend these two men to try and get them off trial. And you never considered that this could be an American plot? to get the Americans to under the ICC jurisdiction, you never considered that? Or a pos or to or that this was an American plot to get the um the former administration indicted for war crimes. Because you know for cause it's like it's made clear by Jack John in this book that is to make an example of the Americans with this case. And so I'm like, so you you have this theory that this is an ex to make an example of the Americans and you're trying to get these men off, but you never considered the possibility that this is an American plot. You never considered that. I'm like, you are a lawyer who's supposed to be getting these men off and getting them out of the prison. And you never considered all, all possibilities. You stuck to this one possibility. I'm like, you're, bye. <laughs> And so basically, when Kristen presents this um, possibility, there's this attorney working with them, Terry, who's basically like, well, maybe this is exactly what the Americans need because I'm in favor of the ICC. Basically, he's like, this is what needs to happen. And Jack John's like, so why are you here helping us try to get them off? And so basically, they have political talk. And I'm like, Jack John, you did not vet these people. You did not vet these people to make sure they were there to help because why would Terry, he's like, why are you here then? And And I'm like, why didn't you vet him? Why would Terry be there unless he's a spy? 
You didn't vet them. You didn't even vet them to see if maybe they were spying. Because you never considered it was an American plot. So you didn't you didn't think it was possible that somebody could be working with... <laughs> you didn't think it was possible that there could be a spy in your midst. Granted, Terry was not a spy in the midst. He was just talking out the side of his neck. And basically, Jack John didn't like that. So Jack John's like, well, Terry, you don't have to be here. And Terry's like, okay, bye. And he and Terry's like, anybody else who feels the way I do, we can go. And so him and two other lawyers walk out. And Jack John's like, Jack John's all pissed off about it. I'm like, that's what happens when you don't vet the people. That that's what First of all, that's what happens when you force people into working with you that did not want to work with you in the first place. And that's what happens when you don't vet the people that are supposed to be working with you. This is your fault, Jack John. You were the idiot. Jack John is a hypocrite. He's a hypocrite because he's like, these men were doing their job. These men were doing their job. These men were doing their job. The whole incident that left with him leaving the seals, oh, those men were doing their job. Those men were doing their job. Those men were doing their job. And he's, and basically his whole argument is, um, you know, civilian deaths were necessary in those cases. They were necessary. They were necessary. And if we break these men out of the prison, it's, it's necessary if some of the guards die because it's for the greater good when terry is basically like oh well you know what if a few people in the um if a few refugees in the facility had to die in order for the americans to get with the to get with the icc then i'm okay with that and jack john's like oh so you're okay with innocent people being killed and i'm like jack john this whole book you have been whining and complaining about the fact that Sometimes civilian deaths are necessary in war. And you yourself have said that this is a political war. This is a political war. But now that Terry is expressing that, okay, well, granted, what happened was not okay. And you agree that what happened was not, and how it happened with refugees being killed was not okay. But you're like, but now that somebody is like, oh, if, but now that somebody spews the same talking points that you've been spewing or for situations you were involved in and that you could potentially be involved in with the prison break, now you're not okay with it, you're a hypocrite. He goes to meet with the intelligence team in the Persian Gulf about what happened that night. And basically they tell him, they, they are very cooperative. They tell him everything that happened. And basically they tell him the person who talked with Quasi was Curly. And basically they, and he, he Jack John takes Kristen here to use her looks. He doesn't take her there to use her brains. He brought her in because he's like, he was like, the reason why he was so insistent on her helping is because he's like, oh, I need your brain. You're creative. You think outside the box. And then when Kristen thinks, out, every time Kristen thinks outside the box, he gets mad. But then he takes her to the Persian Gulf. He takes her to the Persian Gulf, not for her brains, not because she's cold counsel, but because he wants to use her looks to distract the intelligence team, the all-male intelligence team, with her looks so that they can give him the information that he needs. And I'm like, so... <laughs> So you don't value Kristen's intelligence. You don't value what she has to say. And now you're using her for her looks to get what you want. And so basically they tell him that they received the intelligence from Curly, who was in Qatar. So then after they get that and he confirms that all the intelligence officers are willing to appear on trial for the case, he then goes off to Qatar with Kristen and their um, new person, Cruz, who was their guide. At, at the Persian Gulf, he goes with them to Qatar to talk to the team there. And so basically the Colonel, Colonel Wright, who was a woman, <sighs> Lord. like I said, the way women in this book are written terribly, she's got an attitude and she's basically like, I don't like lawyers. I don't like that we're fighting this war. And basically, Jack John's like, why don't you like lawyers? And she's like, y'all make our country terrible. And basically like, oh, so you're divorced. And so basically, she's supposed to be bitter against lawyers in the war because she's divorced. And that's why she got an attitude. Anyway, so basically, the Qatar team is not as cooperative as the Persian Gulf team was. They don't want to help, and but they, they reluctantly do because they've been ordered to help. And so basically, they tell him that Curly's been reassigned to the United States. And so then he goes back to the United States to find Curly. He gets the information from Chris that Curly is on honeymoon in Vegas with his wife. And so on their way to Vegas, he basically flirts with Kristen a little bit and Chris, they basically like, oh yeah, you know, I liked you in college. Oh, I liked you in college. But you know, 
it is what it is. So basically, and they're like, once we're done with this case, maybe we can get together, you know, flirting, but you know, still like holding back a little bit with their feelings towards each other. Ugh. What little romance there was in this book was written terribly. They find Curly in Vegas and he's not willing to help. So basically Jack, John and Kristen go to Vegas. They track him down and they force him into talking with them. So basically he basically says he received the intelligence, but he was told that there were not refugees in the facility. He was told that they were there and that they had been there like in the past tense, like as in they were no longer there. Jack John's like, are you sure? You're sure you did not miss here? And Curly's like, yes, I'm sure I did not miss here. And Jack John's like, will you testify to this at trial? And Curly's like, do I have a choice? So basically Jack John is working with Kevin to figure out who is the actual person who chartered the Falcon that for that mission. They discover who did it, but they possibly broke the law to do it. And so this is the point where Jack John starts acting like a Navy SEAL again and he's basically like he, this is where his mission goes from getting his clients off it starts turning into we're gonna break them out the prison and of course you know kevin's all like i don't like Kristen. i don't trust her because you know guantanamo bay and so he's like i don't trust her da, 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 da. after they figure out who the falcon owner is then um they they learn that the president has withdrawn the battle group and so basically they withdraw the battle group with the stipulation that if they withdraw the battle group, the ICC will drop the indictments against the former administration and they will consider joining the ICC and be under their, under their jurisdiction. And Jack John, of course, is pissed off about this. He's like, oh, the president is a coward. Why would he do this? Da, 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 da. And Chris is like, because he's the president, he has to be concerned with the well-being of the whole country and jack john is basically like no he's a coward he's not willing to do what it takes to get our men out of the prison da, 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 da. he should have enforced that we he had an opportunity to do it on the way to the pre-trial and he didn't take it he's a coward da, da. and i'm like oh my gosh basically jack john's like oh he's not willing to do what it takes to to get our men out of this prison and chris is like he has a job to do to keep our relations good because he's not trying to have us go to war. And Jack John's not trying to hear it. And so basically, he and Kristen get into it. And Jack John's like, Kristen, I thought I could trust you. I thought you were starting to see my point of view. I thought you were starting to get it, finally get it. But if you don't like it, if you're not agreeing with me, and if you're not in agreement with me that we need to get the men out of there, then you can go. And I'm like, Jack John, Jack John, she did not want to be here in the first place. You forced her to be here you forced her and you blackmailed her into this and now you're mad because she doesn't share your point of view which you already knew she did not share your point of view from law school because you knew you two did not have the same political leanings you knew that and you still forced her into doing this because you wanted her creativity so then he calls chris to find out why the president did this and chris is like chris basically says the same thing Kristen said and jack john goes off he's like no he's a coward he's like uriah from the bible he's treating us like a uriah from the bible situation which if you did not know in the bible king david slept with uriah's wife and got her pregnant and basically he called uriah back from the war to basically try and get her to get him to sleep with her to kind of cover the fact that he made an affair baby but Uriah's like no it's not fair for me to have relations with my wife while my fellow soldiers are out there on the battlefield fighting in a war so basically David is like oh well since you're not going to agree with me he basically sets up this scheme to have Uriah killed on the battlefield by having him placed in the part of the battlefield that will um have ensure that he's killed so basically he can't find out that Bathsheba cheated on him and he did all of this because he was lusting after Bathsheba. So it basically after Uriah kills, he takes Bathsheba for a wife. God does not like this. He punishes David for his sin and basically tells David, because you sinned, your child is not going to live. And so David's like, oh, no, Lord, don't take my baby. Please don't take my baby. Anything but that. And of course, because God does not go back on his word, the child does not live. Basically, Jack John's like, oh, the president is, is treating us like a Uriah situation from the Bible. He's pulling out and he's leaving our men out there to um fend for themselves and da 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 da. And he goes off on Chris. Jack John got so pissed off because they withdrew, meaning they were not going to do the Service Members Protection Act. 
which means the president was not going to authorize it, which means that everything they had done was useless. And so he's like, oh no, if the president's not going to do it, I'm going to do it. And after he goes off on Chris, he gets a random note from some random person to meet him in Holland. So he goes over to Holland and it's, it's from Kevin. And Kevin basically has set him up with an office across from the ICC for the trial. And he basically has like a secret room in the office space that's kind of like working as an intelligence base of their own. And basically they are running this plan to basically break into either the prison or into the ICC itself and get Duncans and Rawlings out of the prison. So basically Jack John is like, oh yeah, I'm totally for this. Now he's with Kevin working on getting these men out, which is Kevin's men. <laughs> I'm like, I get that y'all are former Navy SEALs, but y'all really think y'all gonna pull this off? Okay. I want to see it. I want to see you do it. The trial begins. And the first day of trial, you know, it's just witness testimony. And so then before the trial begins, though, Jack John learns from Brady, who was the prosecutor. Brady has been working for a long time to get the Americans to answer for their war crimes. So Jack John, for the longest time, suspects that Brady is the one who has concocted this conspiracy to get them to answer for their war crimes because he's, he's been working so long to get this done. And so basically, Brady tells him, oh, hey, just so you know, your government sent um, a lady to talk to us this morning to negotiate a plea deal. And Jack John's like, what? A plea deal? So basically, after the trial, he goes to talk with uh, Deborah Craven, who's been sent to negotiate a plea deal because the indictments for the former administration have not been withdrawn yet. And so basically, Deborah Craven is there to negotiate to get the indictments dropped against the former administration. And in return, the defendants will take a plea deal and the uh, U.S. will sign the treaty to be part of the ICC. And Jack John's like, no, I believe my men are innocent. We gonna get them out. Jack John decides, I need to reveal this plan to Kristen about getting the pilots out of prison because the U.S. is trying to throw us under the bus. And Kevin specifically told this man, do not tell Kristen. I do not trust Kristen. Do not tell her I'm here. Jack John takes it upon himself to tell Kristen that Kevin is there and what the plan is. And Kevin, of course, is pissed off. Kristen is pissed off because she's like, you've told me this. And now if you go through with this and we get arrested, I can't claim ignorance because now you've told me this. The other attorneys can claim ignorance, but now you've taken that option away from me. And Jack John's like, I had to tell you because you're my co-counsel, so they're gonna believe you were in on it. And Kristen's like, I could have claimed ignorance and you've taken that choice from me and now, I, and I'm not in agreement with this because I'm not in agreement with breaking the law. And Jack John's like, we're not breaking the law. It's going to be, it's authorized. And Kristen's like, no, it's not authorized. And even if it were authorized, it's only authorized by the U.S. government. It's still breaking the law in Holland where we are currently at. And Jack John's like, if we pull this off, the president's going to authorize it. He's so sure of himself that it's going to be authorized. And Kristen's like, I'm not doing this. And Jack John's like, well, if you're not going to do this, then you got to go. And Jack John's like, basically, if you don't do this, if you're not agreeing with this, you have to leave for your own protection. And so Kristen leaves. And Jack John's pissed off that she left because he's like, I trusted her and she left me. And I'm like, why are you mad at her that she's not willing to break international law to do this? Like, why are you mad at people who have not been Navy SEALs, who have not been in the military, who are regular civilians with regular jobs. Why are you mad at them for not being willing to risk their lives? They have never been in a situation where they have to risk their lives for what you deem the greater good. So why are you mad at them for not being willing to risk their lives for this? when they have not been trained to do that. These people are regular lawyers who were forced onto this case by you. Jack, John, and Kevin are like, oh yeah, we gotta get our men out of there. And they're like, we gonna do it at the trial. We gonna break them out of the trial. And I'm like, so y'all are c concocted this plan. And what about the consequences? A potential war breaking out between America and Europe, being arrested as criminals in the United States, being disbarred as a lawyer. They discovered through illegal means that the man behind the Falcon who ordered, who chartered the Falcon, and who the pilots saw on the plane is a man called Christian Piquet. He's a Belgian businessman, very rich Belgian businessman, who is very vehement on having the Americans under ICC rule. And so basically he has set this whole thing up 
to get the Americans under ICC rule. The trial goes on and there is this doctor named Dr. Elizabeth Voss who Jack John encountered in Pakistan and who was very pissed off at him. But she testifies that there were two men that she did not know in the facility who claimed to be there looking for uh, family members and she testifies that she did not know who these men were but that basically she went with their story that they were there to look for family members and that basically just gives credulence that there were possibly enemy forces meeting there in the in the building at the time i wrote into page 275 right here and I'll read it. It says, and so basically when he learns that the, um, who the, who the Belgian businessman is, he's like, you know, I expect to see enemy forces behaving like barbarians, but I don't expect some big time Belgian businessman to be blowing up fellow Europeans all in the hope of entrapping the United States in some war crime trial. It just doesn't add up. And he also says that his anti-war Belgian sacrificed a bunch of his european pals and he's surprised by that because he's like typically europeans aren't for war and stuff like that i'm like jack john colonialism colonialism european countries colonialism they did colonialism they took most of their colonies most if not all of them by force through warfare they fought several wars against each other european countries have fought several wars against each other and you're telling me that you find it unbelievable that a european businessman would bomb a facility with a bunch of europeans in it to further his own goal are you s let me let me get let me get done with this so basically jack john and Kristen have a second confrontation they have an argument over you know the whole breaking the prison people out and jack john's like you need to leave if you're not gonna be part of it and Kristen leaves and goes back to the states and basically, Jack John's like, I can't believe she left. The next day at trial, we finally get Quasi on the stand. And Quasi basically testifies that he told Curly that there are refugees in the facility. And so basically, when Jack John cross-examines him, you know, Jack John cross-examines him and basically catches him in a bunch of lies that only he can see that only he can see because he has training as a as a navy seal so he can so only he can see them only he can see these lies that's being said he basically says um you know if uh you know if curly comes up here and testifies that you said that there are that there were in the past tense and he can produce evidence that you said that you know you're going to be the one that lied right and so basically we learn from kevin through context that he has in, in pakistan that the pakistan government is not happy with quasi because they feel like he embarrassed them on the stand and um they're not happy with him jack john's like he plans the breakout of the pilots for two days from now so basically he decides that they're not going to finish the trial they're going to break out the pilots and send them home and enact a plan to, to break them out and get pk to answer for it what he's done as he's getting ready for the next day of trial curly decides he's not going to testify because he's scared about being indicted and so basically jack john he's scrambling to figure out what he's going to do and so he puts duncan on the stand duncan was planned to go on the stand because duncan was the more level-headed out of him and rawlings and he knew that duncan would conduct himself accordingly on the stand so basically duncan goes on the stand he testifies what we learned in the prologue that they did not know that it was a refugee facility and that if they had known he would not have they would not have carried out the mission after duncan testifies deborah craven lets jack john knows hey the state department and the department of justice have ordered me to close a plea deal for your clients because they feel like it's embarrassing to have our service members on trial and it's making us look stupid and making us look like making us the americans look like we don't know what we're doing it is making us look stupid so i have been ordered to negotiate a plea deal and i'm letting you know and so basically jack john's like he basically pulls some reverse psychology. He's like, oh, yeah, go ahead. Okay, whatever. Do what you got to do. And so basically after she leaves, he goes to Kevin. He's like, we're breaking them out tomorrow because the um, government has pulled the rug out from under us. And we got to get this done. As he's telling Kevin, we got to do this tomorrow. 
Kristen comes back with Curly and she's like, hey, I got Curly. You know, I heard that he said he was not going to testify. So I got him. I brought him back with me. She comes back and she's like, I brought him back with me. He's ready to testify. And Jack John's like, you know what? I'm, I'm thankful that you came back with Curly and you wanted to do the right thing. But we're going to have to go through with the plan because the government is like, uh, we're pulling the rug out from under y'all. So, uh, y'all y'all not finishing this trial because it's embarrassing to us and so chris is like i did all this work and it was for nothing and jack john's like yeah basically the next day curly testifies and of course he doesn't have recordings because as jack john was told earlier they don't record their calls with pakistani intelligence because they don't want to give away who their sources are and so basically curly testifies and confirms what he said earlier that Quasi told him there were refugees in the building in the past tense, as in they were no longer there. And so then after Curly gets done testifying, Jack John has to stall for time for the plan to be carried out. So basically the plan is they are going to break these pilots out of the hog, the ICC, in the middle of the trial. And so he needs to stall for time. And he's already told the admiral who had agreed to go on trial, we don't need your testimony. And so to stop for time, he puts Rawlings on the stand. And everybody's shocked. Like, you're going to put the volatile wood on the stand? So Rawlings goes on the stand, you know, he testifies a little bit. Not too much. Not too much, because what ends up happening is the plan goes into effect. And so basically the plan is they have a fake queen of the Netherlands that they bring into the ICC. And basically, like, the queen is here to watch the proceedings. And... Basically, the ICC security is like, oh, we had no notification of this. And, you know, Kevin Seam, who's acting as her security, they're like, oh, well, you know, the queen never notifies where she goes after the attempt on her life that took place in 2009. And so basically, they basically are like, oh, the queen is going to watch the proceedings and the ICC judge starts arguing with the, with the guard and it's a bunch of confusion. Then Rawlings, like does his part of the plan and basically they are they basically break these men out of the icc they successfully break these men out of the icc get them on a helicopter and to the airport they have chartered two falcon sevens one to take the pilots and Kristen back to the united states and the second one to take kevin jack john and pk to pakistan and basically and the actress that they hired to play the queen she gets to go back home she gets paid and nobody knows who she was and so basically um so the pilots and Kristen, they go back to the United States. Kevin, his men, Jack, John, and PK, they go to Pakistan. And while they're in the air, you know, German pilots are like, you need to turn back around and go back to Belgium or we're going to shoot you down. And Jack John's basically like, if you shoot us down, it's going to be a war crime because we just established at trial that any civilian death is excessive. We established that in the trial. So if you shoot us, if you shoot us down and we're civilians, that's going to be a war crime. And so basically the German pilots leave them alone. They go to Pakistan and hand PK over to Pakistan, to the Pakistan government because, as was noted earlier, Pakistan also did not sign the treaty for the ICC and basically they're like oh you PK you basically brought us into this and we're not under this jurisdiction and so we're holding you under arrest for conspiring with Quasi who embarrassed us to start this war and get us both under ICC rule and we don't appreciate that. Kevin and Jack John decide they're gonna stay in Pakistan and so Jack John gets a call from Chris. Chris is like oh hey we saw what you did we saw how you rescued the pilots and Jack John is basically like yeah with no help from the government and Chris is like you really thought we didn't help you? How do you think Kevin knew to contact you in the first place and so basically it's revealed that chris set this whole thing up he sent kevin to help jack john with getting the pilots out this whole rescue operation was really set up by the government and they just needed jack john to plan it out and execute it and basically they put a whole bunch of obstacles in his way to make him angry enough to actually want to do it and i was like really anyways like i said um this book got a three for me it wasn't bad but it wasn't like something super stellar either my main issue with this book is like the first half was like really like hard to get through it picked up in the second half but i'm not sure if it was because um i was just at this point used to reading it and i was waiting on it to get done i was just powering through to finish or if it was really interesting my main issue is jack john is the same 
throughout the book, he was an unlikable protagonist. And that's not to say that the protagonist has to be likable, but he was unlikable. He was unlikable and like, he never became likable. He never learned anything. He was never humble. He was just unlikable. And this book wants us to believe that he was like the smartest character in the book. And I'm like, he was most definitely not the smartest character in the book. He was far from it, actually. He couldn't even pick up on the fact that Kevin had basically been hired by the government to help him out. And y'all want me to believe he's the smartest character in this book. And this book really does this thing where it like, it dumbs down the other characters to make him seem the smartest and he's not. And it was just really annoying. It was really irritating. That's I think that's what irritated me the most reading this book is that this book wanted us to believe that Jack John was the smartest. It's like the backstory they gave him, this ex-Navy SEAL who's really good at planning and really thinks outside the box, it didn't match up with his actual character that was portrayed in the story. Like the backstory, Jack John, was not the Jack John we got in the story. So yeah, I gave this book a three. Uh, overall, I feel like it could have been a little bit better. The writing could have been a little bit better. The characterizations could have been a little bit better. There was some plot inconsistencies, but overall, I mean, if you're looking for something to read to just pass the time and you think you can make it through the book, I think this would be good. But yeah, other than that, if you like this video, like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.